Hey everybody, today is July 31st, 2018 and here is the next update in the Grow series. So today we're going to do some uh, bloom feeding. Uh, the temperature dropped a little bit now so the plants are doing much better and also I have fed it for the past few weeks so it's much uh, greener than you probably seen in the past few videos. So anyway, uh, we're going to go quickly around and I'll show you the plant right now and then uh, this video is going to be in the span of maybe a few weeks, so uh, I'll add more as we go along. But today I'll just give you something uh, to see really quick. So we'll start out with these plants here. Um, Crimson Star. This is the Linzo, looking beautiful. Lemon Starburst, they're starting to green up. Um, they're putting out more flowers now, so we're going to feed them some bloom formula. That way it will help them along so that they can fruit better. And here's some more here. This is the uh, Stargazer. And that is my Reaper. And then here is a Propagated Lemon Starburst. So those are the plants under my patio right now. And then I have this Purple Ghost here. I think this is, actually this is a Black Boot. So the fruits are like so purple that it looks black. And then here are some of the propagated Super Pekin. And then I have a few plants that I'm starting here kind of pretty late, but I'm experimenting. This is the Hornet here. Man, it's doing so good right now. It, it was struggling in the beginning uh, of the year when I moved it from inside to out here. And this is my Scotch Brain. And then inside the same container, I have one other plant that I don't know what it is. Lost a tag. And this one here is my one of my other crosses. I forgot what the tag says. It's down there somewhere. Uh, Stargazer. And check out this Super Pekin. This is growing like crazy. It was in a 2 gallons and now it's in a 10. So look how beautiful that looks. So... Um, uh, it's starting to put out flowers, so it's it's uh, it's gonna put out another production soon. Okay, here are uh, uh, two of my white tie. Put I got this new pot for it. Okay, and then some more super pekin there, looking really good. Fruits are turning. I need to pick all of those so that uh, they can start over. I have a few months left, up into late October, so that. Uh, still a good long long season here in Texas okay and here is the bed with my lemon starburst I still need to pick those fruits there I'm very nice beautiful shapes lemon starburst right? and then some scarlet roses up in here these are really cool looking pots really good, nice looking pheno but look the plants are looking really nice right now very green growing like crazy and these are the hornets they drop all their buds but that's okay uh, they're starting to put new ones out here so that's why we need to fertilize it and here's my scotch brain I need to clear some of these herbs out so that uh, it can have more room to grow and then this is the supposedly the sweet misery but it turned out different the fruits are pretty nice though I really like it they don't have any seeds so I'm, I'm hoping these will have seeds so that I can grow them again okay and that's my scotch brain back here that's my contest plant look how big that is it's growing like crazy there's a few good pods on here Not too much, but it's okay. Got a few. And then here I have some more uh, Texas Crimson Bonnet, some Stargazer, Scotch Brain over there. Uh, they're doing okay. Was struggling a like crazy earlier this year. I mean, like in June and July. These are all of my uh, white ties doing great right now look how lush and green these are my, my tomato and honey kiss melon and here I have another bed with uh, 
Pequeno, some white habanero, uh, sweet misery, staracha bonnet, and uh, I think back there is a torch. Okay, and then these are my newest crosses here. And then this bed I have some fish pepper over here. See the variegated leaf. Some comfrey is flowering like crazy back there. And this ginormous plant here, that's the uh, um, lamb's quarter. <laughs> it was uh, just a volunteer and I put it there and look how big it's gotten. It's giving the plant some shade so it's gonna remain there for a while. Some cucumbers. These are the Bay at Alpha. And here are some Linzo, Kangsta Red and Yellow. No fruits yet. And then the last bed is just a bunch of random stuff. Ground cherry, tomatoes, basil, and all that stuff. Okay, so that's basically a quick walkthrough of the plants. Uh, we're gonna fertilize it with some bloom formula today, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, for fertilizing with bloom, this is just to help uh, the plant keep the buds and uh, help with fruiting and all that stuff. We're going to use the cool bloom. Uh, before this, I was using the uh, maxi bloom, and those works fine too. So anything with the bloom formula uh, will work well for uh, helping with uh, fruits and stuff like that. And for the flowers to stick and usually uh, the phosphorus and potassium is in a higher number and that's usually because um, during uh, fruiting and blooming and stuff like that the plants use more of this uh, it's true in hydroponic as well as in soil as well and always follow the instructions um, it says here uh, especially in hydroponic if you're doing hydroponic make sure you go exactly what they say uh, more does not really help the plant it actually gonna harm the plants more than it does help it so try to stick to what the labels say because these are very concentrated so um, it says a fourth tablespoon per gallon there or you can use a gram here in liters okay so it comes with a with a little measuring here so what I normally use is the the smaller end of it for this container I think this is a gallon or a little bit over a gallon it doesn't have to be exact but make sure that whatever the thing says per gallon do that so we're gonna fill this up with water so this little jet thing also mixes up really well so. Okay, and then we will just water the plants. Alright, and you just do that uh, as many times as the label instructed. I usually do it uh, once a week, once uh, the plants are blooming. Alright guys, it has been exactly two weeks since we started the bloom formula, fertilizing these plants. Uh, many of them are looking really good uh, with the combination of fertilizing uh, on a weekly and uh, the temperature is cooling down a little bit so it's, it's no longer past the triple digits like over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit um, it is it's much lower now so it's, it's like 95 sometimes 98 degrees Fahrenheit max but in the morning is cool um, around 73 74 so it's uh, the plants are doing much much better um, a few of my plants had uh, a really bad mites infestation so I had to strip a few of it down uh, but the the remainder of the of everything else I mean they're doing really really nice so they're putting out lots and lots of flowers so we're gonna go around and I'll show you um, what's going on okay we'll start with the uh, propagated lemon starburst this guy was sitting next to one of the plants that had mites so it kind of came over and uh, infested this one too so I separated it um, when you notice there's signs of like uh, the, the area around here it's kind of like a bronze color it start to brown and then sometimes uh, the tip of the plant uh, is very brittle when you touch it it falls down 
and then you can just flip it around sometimes you see these little tiny white dots moving around um, if you have a magnifying glass or anything that can uh, zoom in you can probably see better uh, sometimes it's not always mites so make sure uh, you see the mites before uh, you know you can assume that it is uh, mite infestation because sometimes it could be a problem in the soil or it could sometimes that you 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 like over fertilizing so high amount of nitrogen uh, concentrated into the plant will cause similar problem so make sure you diagnose it and make sure that you see mites before you uh, you you know be certain and treat it for mites all right so that's usually how I do it I just flip around I inspect and I see mites and then <laughs> then it, the, you know the, once you uh, are used to seeing these type of damage you kind of recognize them okay the super pekin is doing okay um, we got some pods that are red uh, more flowers are coming back so I should have more um, in a month or so uh, these plants here, they're just growing like crazy. They're not doing anything. All the flowers dropped because of the heat. But look at this. Ever since uh, the, the cooler temperature came, uh, and then, you know, we fed it some bloom, it's, it's kind of putting out more buds. So look at all those buds are starting to open. So that's a good sign. Uh, this one, not much is happening. I think, oh, look at that. There are two fruits uh, set on that one. So here's one. And there's the other one. Man, that's cool. <laughs> I'm really excited to see those. Because uh, once they set, they, they usually stick. Um, uh, once, uh, when they're flowered like this, sometimes they fall off. <laughs> but once they become a fruit, they, they normally stick around. See these over here? These are the damaged um, mice damaged uh, plants. They're not looking very good. Um, see there? The leaves are all ugly looking and kind of brittle this one had a really bad one so i stripped the leaves um the reason i stripped the leaves is because it's really hard to treat if the leaves i mean this plant was so full that um it's really hard to treat so i kind of like pull off the leaves and they'll come back uh, pull off the leaves pick off all of the fruits and uh, and then they the plant will make it back and if you have a long season they'll be back just fine so these are these are horrible looking plants so I'm not gonna go into the details with those they, they don't have anything anyway okay and here is my white tie it was in smaller container and then I moved it into a larger pot and then aphids came I treated the aphids and they're fine so um, that that's that's to get rid of the ants I did a video on that so uh, if you want to see I will link you and here are my super pekin um, these guys are doing much better you see all of those flowers look at that they're all coming back lots and lots of flower so pretty soon i will have lots of pods for these guys uh, this one here had a lot of pods but the birds ate them <laughs> so um, right now they're just just coming back again putting more flowers out nothing's happening that's just a lemon starburst that was the runt so I separated from the raised bed because it was so small so now I'm giving it a second chance and here is my Dorset Naga contest plant I need to put this into a larger pot to give it a chance to compete with with all the rest of the guys and <laughs> Charles plant is like a tree and mine is a little shrub all right guys here is the raised beds and man, these plants are just doing fantastic. Look at this, they're just growing like crazy. It's like a jungle over here. There are all these beautiful plants. So uh, uh, good um, uh, weather, is. Th this is what these uh, lemon starbursts, super hots or any other uh, varieties would do. They just explode with growth. And this is a perfect time to like help them by uh, doing a weekly fertilization. But make sure you don't overdo it because it's, they're very sensitive at this point. And if you overdo it, they'll, they'll just gonna suffer and will do nothing for you. So put it on a schedule, say if you wanna do it once a week, make sure you stay on that and don't do it twice a week because <laughs> then th th it's not gonna do anything for the plants to over fertilize okay so uh, look how beautiful they are and then pods are setting look at those see that and then flowers are coming back lots and lots of flowers 
I mean, not as much as I would like. Um, in the previous season, I had more. In the season before that, I had even more. But but I can't complain because look at this. All these pods are coming, you see? And then look at that. The pods are setting. So as soon as I fed them bloom, wait a week, um, then with the combination of cooler weather, the plants are just much happier now. So look at the pods there. Flower, you know, you can pretty much see flowers on uh, every branch. Fruits are coming, so I, I think I'm gonna get a lot of lot of lemon starburst. And I I didn't even pick the old lemon starburst, so those have been on the plant for like over a month. So guys, um, those that have wonder how long can you keep the fruits on the plant? Uh, it depends Thai variety. Uh, or anything that uh, like cayenne or something less similar to those if you if you leave those pods on the plant they shrivel eventually uh, but these here the lemon starburst these are like a month old uh, on the plant so every, in the updates you will see that I show them on the previous video and they're still here so they're still fresh and nice so <laughs> I'm just leaving them because I don't uh, I don't want to pick a few here and there. I do pick one or two a day or every other day to eat to use. But uh, if I'm not using them, I'm leaving them there because I want them nice and fresh. And here are some hornets and flowers of put it coming back. So good sign. There's a good sign. There's no pots that I can see, but just lots of flowers. Very exciting. Um, again, the cooler temperature, like between 75 and under 85, they would do very, very well. So towards the end of the season, um, they all of a sudden they start producing. So people are, are wondering if these are cool weather plants. <laughs> they're really not. It's just they're getting ready to produce their last set of, uh, of uh, production before they die off. That, that's the reason why at the end of the season you see more pods than the early in the beginning. And here is my scotch brain with all my herbs. And this one's doing pretty well. I I'm seeing pot setting as well. See there? Uh, look at this. So there's more pots there. So flower, lots of flowers. I mean, um, not as much as uh, some of the guys that you've seen on PLC, like Charles and stuff. Uh, and Rob, Rob Blumberg, man, they're, they're harvesting like crazy. I'm really jealous of them. Okay, so these are my basil. Look at this. They're just growing like nuts. So a lot of people wonder why my basil grow so crazy and big and uh, some of theirs are very small. And this is because there's a trick to basil. Uh, if you see buds, pull them off. You see there's, there's no buds at all on, on this entire bush. Because anytime I see them, you see like this here? Just pull those off. Because the buds will cause the plant to stop growing because they will go into flower production and then when that happens they just slow down the growth so if you see buds pick them all off every single one of them and they will just continue to grow and they will look like pepper trees or pepper plants okay and there here is my sweet mystery so they finally changed color man this this guy is just I'm so confused by this so the pod starts out yellow and it stays yellow that way. And then you wait a long time. These things take forever, like a month. It'll go to orange. And then finally, it'll go into a deep red color right here. And that's the final color. But it's, it's a very long process. These things are really hot. So it, it tastes very similar to my sweet misery, but uh, it just looks a little bit different. So I don't know if it's a cross or another variation, but the plant is beautiful. Look at this, guys. Look at that. Very nice, bushy, produce a ton. I mean, flowers, hundreds and hundreds of flowers dropped because of the heat, but look at that. They're, they're still putting out more pods. So the, see, that's a young pod right there. Kind of like a greenish, lighter green. And then, and then yellow. And it stays that yellow color for like a month okay and back there is my scotch brain contest plant i got four pots total that's it <laughs> some people are up to 180 something but uh i have hopes because look at that it's it's looking really good um lots of flowers there so i think i will get more than 50 pods for this soon 
another sweet misery. And here is my Texas Crimson Bonnet bed. And these guys are doing fantastic. Look how beautiful they look now. And I think I saw a few pod set right there. So that uh, the Texas Crimson Bonnet, they come in two different varieties. I just found that uh, out this year because I sent a bunch of seeds out. And some turn out chocolate and some turns out red, so, which is very, very exciting for me because I, I love this variety. It tastes ridiculously hot, but very, very nice and, and a good pepper to eat. And the, the, the unique thing about these guys is like the stems are like two inches long or maybe sometimes longer. They're very, very, it's like a fuse, very, very long. And all of the pods are like that. Okay, and these are little baby stargazers. They're not doing too well. And I think that here is a scotch brain. And these are my white tie looking really nice right now putting more flowers out like lots of i love this variety because they grow in cluster like this every little section is a cluster here and it'll put out like eight to nine sometimes ten uh pods in that single node uh, if you haven't seen uh, how beautiful these look check out charles channel man he has a beautiful um white tie okay and this bed here Got some sweet misery, Staracha bonnet. Look at that pod setting. Some bikinos. Nothing's happening. Some white habanero back there. Some other crosses of mine right here. I'll show you guys the pod later as they come. And some fish pepper there. These are just coleus, cucumbers. Got some melons. And then this last bed here is a uh, kangster red and uh kangster yellow and linzo back there linzo is a very productive plant and then i got rid of everything in that bed to prepare for some melons anyway guys that is the update the plants are looking fantastic so uh in the next update you're gonna see a lot more pods so uh i'll see you guys soon thanks for watching